the modern way to formalize such average treatment effects and to show what actually an instrumental variable estimator estimates, which sort of average, um, is based on the so-called Rubin causal model. And um, in particular with settings where we have binary treatments, like here you have the intensive job counseling or not, and binary instruments, so uh, you have the option for job counseling or not, uh, that is really uh, very popular in the modern empirical literature. And it basically, it, it, it's a slightly different mathematical approach than we had before, where we started writing down a regression model with a certain functional form, typically linear, but we can also have logarithms and so, and uh, add an error term and make some assumptions on the error term and the exponential variable, so like exogeneity assumptions or so on. So one basically doesn't write down such a linear regression in the Rubin causal model, um, but one defines outcomes and uh, potential outcomes. So let's denote by yi the outcome for individual i. So in our example, that would be, has he found a job within six months? So just zero or one, the outcome. And the Rubin causal model assumes that every individual has two potential outcomes. Yi0 is a potential outcome if y would not be treated, so if he does not get intensive counseling, and yi1 is a potential outcome if he would be treated. Yeah, so it could be that in both cases he does not find a job, then uh, both uh, yi0 and yi1 would be equal to zero. It could be that in both cases he finds a job, uh, then both would be one. It could also be that he only finds a job if he gets intensive counseling, then yi1 would be one, while yi0 would be zero, or could also be the other way around in principle. And um, there's actually no particular distribution of functional form for these potential outcomes assumed. So this can be really different uh, for, for each individual, these uh, potential outcomes, uh, whether you finds a job or not, depending on whether he will get the treatment or not. Of course, every econometric model has some assumptions, and a key assumption of the Rubin causal model is called the stable unit treatment value assumption, SUTVA, which sounds like some IKEA um, uh, piece of furniture. Um, what it means is that it's assumed that this potential outcomes of each individual are not influenced by how the treatment is assigned to other individuals. So whether you, you find a job having the intensive counseling or not having it does not depend on whether other job seekers get intensive counseling or not. And um, if you see such an assumption, I think it typically helps to think about by, by thinking about the story of post potential reasons why this assumption might be violated. And, and let's think of our application. For example, assume that uh, counselors who do intensive job counseling directly contact firms who have open position and basically make advertising for their job seekers. They say, well, this job seeker is really good for your position. You should really consider hiring it. But this may make it harder for job seekers who don't get this intensive counseling to fill exactly those positions because they may be uh, filled by these people who have the nice job counseling or who promoted them. So in such an example, your outcome may depend on the treatment of the other. So it, maybe if the other guy wouldn't have gotten intensive job counseling, he wouldn't have been promoted to the position and you would have get, gotten the position. Then your outcome um, may, may depend on the treatment of the others. And that would be a violation of the stable unit treatment value assumptions. Yeah, so, um, but in our setting, basically the authors assume that this assumption is satisfied. So they um, 
basically they don't mention these sort of concerns that uh, your chances to to find a job are reduced if other job seekers get intensive counseling so this sort of story probably is not relevant but in an empirical investigation you you should kind of consider such stories and maybe ask then the people uh, who were involved with this experiment what do act actually these shop counselors do how do they find a job is it just counseling or do they also uh, phone the firms and then maybe the set assumption may not so plausible so let's come back to the general notation of the rubin causal model the treatment effect for individual i is the difference of its potential outcome so the outcome potential outcome if you would get the treatment minus the potential outcome if you would not get the treatment um, but each individual can only either be treated or not so let treated i be the dummy variable that is one if and only if subject i has been actually treated so this means for each individual we can only observe one of the two potential outcomes if individual i was not treated then the outcome for it is the potential outcome given that it was not treated and if individual i was treated we observe the potential outcome given that it was treated by i1 and but since we only can observe one potential outcome we can never directly observe the treatment effect for an individual yeah because uh, there we would need to observe the outcome given that it's treated or not but for each individual we can only decide that's either treated or not and this is sometimes called the fundamental problem of causal inference. We only observe one of the uh, potential outcomes. And this means we cannot, for a particular individual, directly estimate uh, or, or see the treatment effect. However, under suitable assumptions and well-randomized experiments, for example, we can estimate some averages of the treatment effects across all individuals and kind of uh, the one thing would be the the different definition of, of averages so one would be the average treatment effect ate and it is defined as the expected treatment effect uh, taking the expectation of all possible individuals in the population so the expected difference between the potential outcome if i was treated minus potential outcome if it is not treated and we take the expectation of all possible people i and there's also a, a different average treatment effect it's the average treatment effect on the treated abbreviated typically with att and it is defined as the average treatment effect for those people that get the treatment yeah so in general, whether a subject is treated or not can be correlated with a potential outcome. So look at our example. Um, so the, the, the job seeker can decide whether he accepts the treatment or not. And in principle, those who accept the treatment may have different treatment effects than those who decide not to accept the treatment. Yeah, as we have suggested before, it seems likely that perhaps those people who accept intensive counseling counseling have larger treatment effects than those who reject it. I mean, for those who reject, we, we don't observe the outcome if they would be treated. We only observe the outcome if they are not treated. Um, for those who are treated, we only observe the potential outcome that they are treated. Um, but uh, this treatment effect can, still, uh, can differ systematically between these two subgroups. And the average treatment effect on the treatment, our example, would be the average treatment effects for those people who are willing to accept the treatment or who would accept the treatment if they were given the treatment option. While the average treatment effect also takes into account the people who would always decide to reject the intensive counseling. So while we can never observe the individual treatment effect, we sometimes can consistently estimate the average treatment effect uh, ATE or the average treatment effect on the treated. For example, Consider an experiment where this treatment is assigned in a perfectly randomized way so that it's completely independent of the potential outcomes of the individuals. So in our treatment setting, it would be if um, we just randomly decide whether a job seeker gets the 
um, intensive counseling or not, and the job seekers cannot reject the intensive counseling. Everybody who is assigned to it gets it. Everybody who is not assigned to it doesn't get the intensive job counseling. Then the average treatment effect and the average treatment effect on the treatment would be the same because there's no systematic difference between those who, who get the treatment or not because there's no individual decision to accept or reject it. It's just randomly uh, assigned. And um, one could simply estimate these average treatment effects by uh, the difference, looking at the difference in the mean outcomes in the treatment groups. So that's kind of an estimate of the YI1 and uh, the mean outcome in the control group, that's an estimate of the potential outcome YI0. Just computing the difference um, would give us the, um, a consistent estimate of the average treatment effect and the average treatment effect on the treated in such a perfectly randomized experiment. And we could also do this by running an OLS regression with a treatment dummy. So this is similar to the diff and diff stories we discussed in chapter four, how you can uh, use regressions with dummy variables instead of, of computing differences manually.